Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to Asgard. Um, today I wanted to do a really, really quick tutorial on the mod Tinker IO. Um, it's basically an addition to Tinker's Constructs um, and it is absolutely wonderful. If you haven't played around with it, it is a lot of fun. Um, and it's basically just mainly expansions for the Tinker Smeltery. And then we also have a new block, which is the Ore Crusher, as well as another one, the Sterling Engine. So the first block that I want to talk about is the Sterling Engine. Now this will basically allow you to generate RF power using Tinker's Constructs. Now I will say that it's not a lot. Um, and honestly, if there's any other kind of RF power mods that you have access to, um, I would suggest that you go ahead and go for those um, once you get the chance to. Um, but basically the Sterling Engine here, um, for example, if I take this lava bucket, I throw some lava in this tank, you're going to see down there at the bottom right that the lava is slowly being drained from this. And if we take a look here, you'll see that the RF power is going up. Um, and the fuel amount listed there is how much is in the tank. Basically, it has to be attached to some kind of a, a Tinker's Construct tank in order for it to run. So, for example, over here, if I put this on top of a drum, it doesn't run. Um, it does have to be a Tinker's Construct tank. Now, you'll notice that one bucket of lava generates 75,000 RF. You can also use any kind of liquid. And the amount of power that the Sterling engine generates is based on the heat of the liquid. So, for example, if we looked up molten metals, um, we took a look at, say, molten manulin. Um, it has a heated temperature of 1,000 Kelvin. Um, emerald has 999, you know, cobalt's 950, there's all these different temperatures, but generally I prefer lava, personally. Um, but basically just look at the temperature and that's going to kind of give you a fair gauge. Um, for the most part, lava is one of the hottest liquids that you can come across other than something like molten redstone. Um, so it is, it is probably one of the best bets, I feel like, as far as power goes. Um, conductive iron's a little bit hotter, but not by much. Dark steel. I mean, a lot of these things are, are higher tier, and chances are by the time you're making dark steel, um, you probably have better power than the Sterling engine anyway. Um, because it is, it is in essence, very kind of early game, early tech tier um, type power. But if you do need power, um, and you're only going with Tinker's constructs like at the start, um, that is an option. Now next up, let's talk about the Ore Crusher. Now, the Ore Crusher does require power to run. You'll see that there's an RF storage of 100,000 in here um, that it can use. And basically what the Ore Crusher does is it allows you <clears throat> um, to crush your ores and get double with a chance for triple. Um, you'll see here there's a 30% chance to get a plus one. That means there's a 30% chance for the ore, whenever you crush it, to produce three um, of an ingot or of a dust. Um, so, for example, if I grab some iron ore here and I throw like a piece of this in here, you'll notice it is fairly slow. Um, there is a way to fix that. So, if we take a look here, there's a few different upgrades with Tinker's uh, Tinker IO. And for right now, I'm just going to cover the ones that pertain to the ore crusher, and we'll get into some more um, in the very near future. Like right there, okay, I got two crushed um, iron ore. Um, but you can get these speed upgrades. And if you throw these in here, you can throw up to a stack of them in there. And you'll notice that it does increase the um, the run speed. There we go. We got three from that one. And three and three. Getting all kinds of threes now. Okay, there we go. Now we're back to doubles. Um, but it is a way to get triple ore. Now, in addition, um, you can also make these fortune upgrades. And the most that you can put onto here is one. And you'll notice if you put one fortune upgrade in here, it jumps, it bumps it up to 60% chance for uh, triple ores. Now you can get this to 100%. The other thing that you're going to need is you're going to need an enchant book with fortune three on it. And I have found um, in one of my series that if the book has anything other than just fortune three on it, it will not work. So it has to be just a fortune three book. Um, but if you throw this in here, for each book that you put in here, you're going to get an additional 20% chance. So if you have both the Fortune 3 books and the Fortune Upgrade in here, um, it is going to give you a 100% chance to get that plus one. So every time that we save ore now, we're going to get three. So it is, it is really, really great. Um, this is something I feel like could be invaluable because unless you have something like Mechanism in the pack, um, getting a 100% chance for triple ores is not a common thing within a mod. So personally, I feel like this is one of my favorite blocks from the mod. One of my very, very favorites. 
if you were to throw this in the furnace and throw in some coal, you're going to notice that it does not smelt. This doesn't work like other dust. This has to be thrown into the tinker smeltery. Um, and whenever you do, you're not going to get the same thing as if you were to cook up iron. Now, I will say that it does cook up very, very quickly, as you'll notice, um, because I don't have any kind of speed upgrades on this. Um, but it creates this pure metal. Um, so this pure metal, you're not going to be able to combine it with standard iron. So, for example, if I was to grab um, some iron ore and I threw that in there, it's going to take a little bit to cook that up. But it won't, these won't go together. You're going to have molten iron and then you're going to have pure metal iron. So they're totally different liquid materials um, and they will not combine. So just a heads up on that. Um, but it's fairly easy to make a little system to have the ore crusher crush the stuff up and then send it to the, you know, the smeltery and so on. Now the only downside to the ore crusher, one thing I forgot to mention, is the majority of modded ores it will not accept. Coppers, tins, things like that. Um, it will not accept. However, stuff that's related to Tinker's constructs, such as cobalt, ardite, aluminum, um, any kind of vanilla ores, any of that stuff it will accept. So if you want to include an ore crusher into your system, um, just be sure and filter that because it will take the take the ores in there if you don't filter it, but they're just going to sit there and they're not going to get crushed and it's going to back up your system. So just keep that in mind, um, you know, if you're if you're setting that up for, you know, your system or something like that. Now there's also this what a beautiful block. And basically, I mean, you could use this for building if you want. It does require nether stars. Um, so just a heads up, it's not, it's not a cheap block by any stretch of the imagination. So um, you will use that to craft the fortune upgrade. Um, but that's really the only use for it. But if you wanted a glowstone block with a nether star stuck to it, um, <laughs> you can craft that. But here we go. So you'll see that the molten iron and the pure metal iron um, do not do not go together. Now next up we have the fuel input machine. This this block is absolutely wonderful as well. Um, you can just stick this on pretty much anywhere on your smeltery and if you take a look here it's got some speed upgrades, it's got solid fuel um, slot and you can see a temperature, a ratio. Um, so basically if I was to take some coal and depending on what you put into this um, it's gonna have a different ratio. So for example um, so if I was to throw a piece of iron in here, you're going to notice that it, it eats one of these pieces of coal. The temperature goes up slightly, um, but it's not much of a speed increase. So by default, it's not all that great. But what you can do is you can actually take speed upgrades. And once again, just like the ore crusher, you can put up to a stack of these in there. Um, and if I was to throw speed upgrades in here, you'll notice the temperature jumps up, the ratio jumps up. And it will actually cook through this iron a little bit quicker. Um, it's not terribly noticeable with uh, just block pieces of coal. But if we were to instead take, say, blocks of coal and throw those in there. And I was to throw in some iron ore. You'll notice it shoots through that iron ore and only consumed a portion of a block of coal in that process. You'll see the temperature jumped up to 57,000. Um, and that's why it goes so fast. It basically like super buffs up your smeltery more or less and anything you throw in there Like I could have thrown all this iron basically filled up the smeltery and it still would have cooked at that speed um, for the same amount of the same amount of um, Coal block basically um, because what it does is for the duration that that coal block is burning um, The temperature in the smeltery gets so hot that it just basically liquefies um, stuff that gets thrown in there now you can still upgrade that even more. So for example, if I throw coal coke in there, you'll notice that the temperature jumps up to 113,000 um, and it, it really liquefies metals at that point. Absolutely insane. And this can be fed with item conduits, hoppers, basically any way of inserting uh, materials. Also the crusher can, um, you can use hoppers or conduits or anything like that to insert and extract um, from it as well. So they're very, very easy to automate. They're fully automatable and everything. So <clears throat> just a heads up on that. That's pretty much how those blocks work. Um, there is one additional block that we're going to need to cover, and that is the smart output. Um, this mod is fairly simple. If you take a look here, Tinker.io basically just adds these blocks, adds um, a solid fuel that you can craft. And by the way, the solid fuel is actually a little bit better than coal coke. And you'll notice it cooks stuff like instantaneously. It bumps the temperature up to 141,000. 
And other than that, it basically just adds the crushed ore, it adds a music disc, and then all these different upgrades. So um, the last thing that I want to show you is the smart output. This thing can also be um, drained with, uh, you know, hoppers or anything like that. So let me show you, for example, if I was to get the chest here, we'll set the chest up right there, attach our hopper onto it, and then the smart output basically just goes below your drain. And then what we can do is we can take a look in here and see this little GUI. This is actually the amount of liquid that is stored inside the smart output. Um, and right here you can put any kind of cast in here. So for example, if I wanted to make um, ingots, I could throw an ingot cast into this. And then what I could do is right click that, the drain, and you'll notice it's making iron ingots. And it's going to make these... Um, until you right click the faucet and turn it off. Now if you don't have anything in here and you pour liquid into this, you'll notice it's it's dumping that pure metal into here and if you ever get any kind of liquid in here that you want to just get rid of, you can just hit empty the tank and you have to hold shift, my bad. Hold shift and it'll dump any liquid that gets that gets caught in here because sometimes you know you'll get some like little tidbits of metal and stuff like that that um, don't really go into anything. I mean, you could always throw a nugget cast into here or something, um, but you can also empty the tank. I tend to do that a lot myself. Now, in addition, there's a lot of upgrades that work with the smart output, and the primary ones are like the slot upgrade, the redstone upgrade, and then the basin upgrade. So there's four different slot upgrades. I'm just going to cover, I'm just going to use the top one. Uh, but for example, if I throw a slot upgrade in here, Basically, this is going to increase it by four um, max. And each of these, this one increases it by one, two, three, and four. And you can stack these up, and you can also grab another stack. They only stack up to eight, sadly. So if you have, you know, a full bunch of slot upgrade fours, you're not going to be able to put any kind of other upgrades into this. Um, but basically, this is going to increase the max that it can hold. Um, but you'll notice that if you're pulling items from this, it's not going to really have any kind of effect. So personally, I don't use the slot upgrades. That's just me. Um, it's really just up to you. If you don't want the hopper on the bottom um, and you just want to use the slot upgrades, you can do that. So for example, it will store up to 64 of an item. But if you pull these out of here, you'll notice that it stops pouring at 1. So that's basically what those do. Um, it's pretty much all there is to these slot upgrades. Now the redstone upgrade is basically going to allow you to control this with redstone. So for example, if I grab a lever here, throw it on the side. So right now it's making ingots for us. We can see right here that it's producing ingots. But if I right click that, it's going to shut it off. It's going to stop making, um, you know, that metal. Even if I'm pouring stuff in here, it's not going to create any ingots from it because it has a redstone signal. So basically it's just going to store that liquid up inside there. And now it's making ingots again. And that's basically what the, uh, the redstone upgrade does. So if you want to control this with redstone, all you got to do is pop one of those in there and you're set. Now lastly, there's this basin upgrade. This one I absolutely love. You'll notice that whenever you put this on here, the basin... Um, becomes available. It's no longer got the red X on it. And so basically if you want to use the basin, all you have to do is not have anything in this. And now if I was to pour liquid into this, it will create a block of iron for you. Now the nice thing about this is it will keep pull, uh, pouring until you shut it off. So if you have a lot of liquid in here like I do, this molten iron, um, it's gonna, you know, just keep running and keep running until this is drained. Um, now one thing to note is the pure metal that you get from the ore crusher does not, it will not make blocks. Um, I don't know if it's a bug or if it's intended to be that way, um, but when I poured out a bunch of that pure metal, it, it just refused to make a uh, block of iron. So um, I had to put the ingot cast in there and basically convert it all over um, into ingots. And one last thing to note, of course the seared faucets are very, very slow, but luckily these are compatible with conduits. Or any kind of piping so if we throw that on there you'll notice it just starts making blocks of iron extremely quickly 
And the best part is you don't have to wait for this stuff to cool like you would in a normal casting basin. You know, in, in a standard casting basin, it pours the liquid in there, and then it has to wait a while while the liquid cools. And if you've ever done it with blocks, you know that blocks actually take quite a while to cool off. Um, and this smart output, it, it basically just guns right through them. So this makes for an actual, like, really, really nice setup. Um, if you want to... You know, have an automated tinker setup that doubles your ores or even triples your ores with the ore crusher. Um, and with the fuel input, I mean, you can you can cook metals extremely fast. Your your smeltery with the fuel input, your smeltery is never going to get backed up. And then using conduits with smart outputs, you know, it's not going to back up that either. And another nice thing is, of course, you could always filter these conduits. Um, and have like, you know, different drains around this that are filtered to only extract, say, this one only extracts iron, this one only extracts gold, this one only extracts tin, and so on, so that you don't have like odd amounts of metals backing up your system or anything like that. And that way everything, you know, has a place for it to go and you're not going to have any issues with it. Now keep in mind that pure metal, um, like I said, it, it doesn't want to make blocks for whatever reason. Um, I don't know if that's going to be fixed in the future or if that is intended. So anyways, with that said, um, I do believe that that pretty much covers the mod. Of course, if you guys have any questions, um, do let me know and I will do my best to get those answered for you. Also, if you've seen my other tutorials, you know I don't cover crafting recipes. Um, I know I've had a couple people talk about that, but that's not that's not something that I cover because everybody has NEI or JEI. So I feel like it's a waste of your time, um, you know, watching the episode if I sit there and spend you know the first like five minutes covering crafting recipes i don't really see the point in it so um anyways if you guys enjoyed it be sure and hit that like button and go ahead and subscribe if you're not already for more daily videos and um, as always if you have any questions or anything please 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 let me know and i will try to get those answered for you and i hope to see you guys next time so until then as always do take care stay safe and i will see you guys then